The mortal Jean Grey is no more. I am fire made flesh, power incarnate. I am Phoenix. Analyzing the superhero costumes of Jean Grey. As mentioned in the previous costume analysis, costuming is often overlooked as unimportant to storytelling. This is a shame, considering the amount of effort that goes into creating some of the most beloved fictional characters' designs. Jean Grey Summers, originally codenamed Marvel Girl, is not only one of the five first-class X-Men, but she has one of the most interesting journeys out of any X-Man's history created during a time when it wasn't uncommon for the female characters in the cast to be relegated to the damsel in distress. Jean Grey eventually broke this stereotype by not only being classed as an Omega level mutant, but by becoming a harbinger of the Phoenix Force, one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe. So despite this commenter who seems confused as to why the analysis of character design is significant, in this video, we will be analyzing three costumes Jean Grey has donned that I adore, and three costumes Jean Grey has donned that I abhor during my research into Jean Grey's costume history. It surprised me how often I disliked her ensemble. So keep in mind, this list is subjective, and if you have a different opinion from mine, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Shall we begin? To end this video on a good note, we'll begin with the costumes I abhor, leading with Jean Grey as she appeared during X Factor, written by Peter David, reminiscent of her original design. This full-length bodysuit complete with a headpiece that drowns her hair is absolutely hideous. It doesn't look good in green or red, but the blue variant with pointed shoulders and a flattering headpiece is a gorgeous improvement on this design. Taking another note from the fantastic channel Great Xmentations, Jean Grey covering her hair with a headpiece has never looked good. The giant yellow X does nothing for her figure, and it's a shame that the headpiece is the most unique part of this costume, because it's also the worst. The red variant that lets her gorgeous hair down is moderately better, but still not a great look when considering similar color patterns. Next, we have Black Queen Jean Grey, written by Chris Claremont and illustrated by John Bryan. Even though this costume is extremely short-lived in Jean's career, I still felt the need to include it, considering how impactful this time of her life was. The Hellfire Club is a secret organization that takes inspiration from chess pieces. When Jean Grey was manipulated into joining the ranks as the Black Queen, she immediately adhered to their dress code of leather, tights, and showing copious amounts of skin. Taking into account that this is the dress code for this group, I still believe this outfit is extremely ill-fitting for Miss Grey. Normally, I believe in skin for the win, but not for a character as modest and humble as Jean Grey. The beehive updo is cleverly reminiscent of a crown, but aesthetically ages her much more than I believe the illustrators intended. It's giving a little Peggy Hill. But the massive cape classed together by a rose is gorgeous. However, it's very unnatural on Jean. I don't like the corset, I don't like the whip, I don't like the boots. I abhor this look not only on Jean, but in general. We end the outfits I abhor with Jean Grey's green mini dress designed in universe by her and written by Stan Lee and illustrated by Jack Kirby. Another costume that is extremely divisive in the X-Men community. This is another costume fans typically love with all their heart or hate with a passion. I don't hate this costume with as much intensity as others. My issue with this costume is similar to a costume we covered during Supergirl's costume analysis, being this feels too far away from traditional superhero style to be considered a good costume. This is a lovely dress, but even judging it as an everyday garb doesn't boost its appeal. It's a little boring. Interestingly enough, I feel like Emma Frost did this better for a brief period of time during Hickman's run. The mask is spot on for superhero aesthetic, but it's just a little too much to be flattering. And although green and yellow are complementary colors, this is one of the few times I feel like this combination doesn't work for Miss Grey. I much prefer this color combination on Rogue. This is a good example of showing extra skin without coming off sleazy though. I do feel like this is a classy look, but very out of bounds when it comes to a superhero costume. Now for the costumes I adore, 
leading with Jean Grey as she appears during the 90s, designed by Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri. Arguably Jean Grey's most recognizable costume due to the popularity of the 90s animated show, next to her Phoenix uniform. This design instantly evokes a psychic vibe with the bulky futuristic accessories and the best face wrap Jean Grey has worn still to this day. Its shape complements her facial features and the mark on the center of her forehead perfectly encompasses a telepathic style. This look instantly lets the viewer know Jean Grey has a powerful mind. The soft orange and bold blue work surprisingly well together especially with her hair, which is usually up in a ponytail during the animated series. But I much prefer Jean's hair when it's big, bombastic, and in your face, like the comics. I'm typically not a fan of big, oversized shoulders, but I couldn't imagine this look on Jean without them. I simply adore the way the blue traces down her shoulders and leads directly between her legs, giving a subtle, sensual edge. This costume is truly forever iconic. Next, we have Jean Grey as she appears during the Hellfire Gala, designed by Russell Dodderman. Once again, we have another stunning appearance from the first Hellfire Gala, and I promise it won't be the last. This is another gala look that became an official costume for a short period of time, and I think it speaks for itself why. Something I loved almost every time it was incorporated into the Hellfire Gala designs was when the character in question combined their powers with their fashion statement of the night. Jean Grey used her telekinesis to perpetually levitate giant golden shards to frame her face. This helped to elegantly balance the large amounts of green in this ensemble. And let me take this opportunity to say, this is how you do green combined with gold or yellow properly. Jean dons a full bodysuit with a lighter shade of green covering her torso, and lovely additions of gold accents atop her hands, heels, and the outline of her ribcage that brings the attention of the eye to the X gracefully placed atop of her belly button. Her train doubles as a cape and gives this design a superhero effect while simultaneously working for red carpet events. Easily one of my favorite looks Mrs. Grey Summers has ever worn. We end the costumes I adore with a typical but undeniably iconic costume. Jean Grey as she appears as the harbinger of the Phoenix Force, another creation of Chris Claremont and Dave Cockrum. Jean Grey wore this costume during her most influential period still to this day. The Phoenix Saga forever changed the X-Men and the Marvel Universe, and this costume has had a lasting impact on Jean's career. It's a simple look. A full bodysuit with golden shoulder length gloves and matching thigh high boots with the phoenix symbol on the center of her chest. This look and all its variations leave a lasting impression from green to white and especially red. Red was the representative of the dark phoenix and this look screams I am fire and life incarnate. This is one of the few costumes I prefer for Jean to keep her face completely exposed. Although this isn't the most complex costume, it is undeniably eye-catching. Even though I consider the red variant the most iconic, my personal favorite is the white. It gives Jean an ethereal cosmic energy that's enhanced by the gold. Another variant that features only black and red was also nice, but it lacks the regal energy that's brought with the gold. One of my favorite altered versions of this costume is Revolution Jean that adds a bit of texture and shows a little skin. To make such a simple costume memorable is quite an impressive feat and may play a large part into why this costume is a classic. Thank you for watching this short costume analysis voted by you in the poll for Jean Grey. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to help me in a non-monetary way, you can follow me on my socials. They'll be on the screen and linked in the description box down below. You can also like the video, comment anything below, share it, and especially subscribe. These things help me tremendously. If you want to go an extra step further, you can subscribe to my Patreon. And I just want to take a second to thank my wonder patrons, Kirsten Letts, Jerry Jenkins, Clever B and Mortonette Stevens. You are the greatest supporters in the world. Thank you so much. If you would like to be a patron for as little as a dollar a month and get your name in the credit roll, you'll find the link in the description box down below. And I appreciate any and all support. So thanks in advance if you check it out. You get videos early over there. I'm going to start posting these fashion analysis early over there and probably with extra 
footage and do votes over there and stuff. I'm going to be doing stuff to make my Patreon a lot more active since I've been becoming more active on YouTube. On TikTok, I host watch parties on the weekends. We watch anime, movies, uh, anything, suggestions. We have a lot of fun over there. It's just nice being in the chat and reminiscing or watching current things. X-Men 97 has been super fun to watch, which is why I have been covering the X-Men's fashion. I would love to see you there. Uh, check out my Instagram to look at me shirtless and working out and stuff. And thank you for supporting. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments who you would like to see for the next fashion analysis. I'm going to do another vote in my community tab so you can keep an eye on that. And I love you. Thank you for watching and have a great night.